Let's play a game of word association. What are the first words that pop into your mind when I say networking? Dull, maybe? Superficial? Awkward salespeople? Networking has a stigma of being an environment in which people, online or offline, are faking the best version of themselves in order to convince other people to do business with them as quickly as possible. And yet, despite this negative stereotype, it is still seen as one of the most crucial skills in the toolkit of most professions, especially if you have ambitions for career progression, and even more so if you're starting your own business. Personally, I realized the value of networking around five years ago, when I became a student member of the Institute of Directors. It was here that I learned to network professionally, and then through LinkedIn Local, I learned to make it meaningful. And I believe that developing this skill, meaningful networking, is the primary reason that I have not had to apply for a single job role in over five years, despite changing careers and industries and climbing the career ladder several times. I've had opportunities come through former colleagues, through people I've met at events, and once, most ridiculously, whilst I was on a first date in an Indian restaurant called Mango's. I'll tell you about that one at the end, so stick around. The point is, opportunities have seemingly fallen into my lap in a way that continues to baffle myself and my friends and family and has earned me the reputation for being lucky. What I would like to share with you today is why I believe that meaningful networking has been the single greatest contributor to my good luck and some stories that I hope will help you to transform superficial and surface level interactions into meaningful opportunities to form genuine connections. Because networking and the importance of networking is something that is drilled into us from a surprisingly early age. You know, we hear sayings like, your network is your net worth, and it's not what you know, it's who you know. These sayings are a recognition that almost all opportunities that fall into the laps of the lucky have come through a person who knows them. Let me say that again. Almost all luck comes through other people. See, I believe that luck is an active process. Yes, random chance plays a role, but it is massively influenced by the people who know you. Like, how did I come to be standing here today doing a TEDx? And I mapped out every person I had to meet to be here, and there are a surprising number of ways that this might never have happened. So many conversations that each which I had to take seriously regardless of who I was talking to, going way back to a single conversation with a student at a university networking event over four years ago, that if I hadn't taken him seriously, I wouldn't have been here. You have to be consistent with your approach to networking because in order to be in the right place at the right time, you first have to be out there to be found. Some opportunities will slap you in the face and ask if you're paying attention, but most of them lurk within the nuances of a conversation that must be carefully uncovered. You need to be prepared for both of these extremes and everything in between the two, because consistent networking can increase your chances of positive occurrences, especially if you didn't inherit a network from your family or from your school. So it's important. Now, if I were to ask you, what's the hardest part of networking, what would you say? And I asked my LinkedIn network this question, and most people, particularly young people, say that they find starting a conversation with a stranger the hardest. And there is no doubt that this is incredibly awkward for everyone, including me. You know, that the butterflies you get in the stomach that I have right now, um, that, you know, when you make that dreaded eye contact and say, hi. Ultimately, it's the prospect of rejection that drives this fear. What if they say they don't want to talk to me? And this is where the magical context of networking steps in to reassure us. Just say hello. This other person has literally come to this place with the intention of meeting new people. Your chances of social rejection have never been lower. Like, I remember being at my first psychology social as a Plymouth University fresher, and it was at an aquarium of all places. And I spent the first 45 minutes or so walking around by myself, sipping champagne, staring at fish, and getting gradually more lonely. And then I realized, hang on a minute, if I'm feeling this way, chances are all of these other people who are walking around by themselves are feeling exactly the same thing. And that realization gave me the confidence to approach my first person 
And we formed a group that then spent the rest of the evening finding anyone else who was by themselves and inviting them to join us. And let me tell you, the look of relief on their faces when we did was incredible. And I've still got many good friends that I met that night. Because you see, these environments have naturally attracted a group of people who want to talk to you. So throw yourself into it. Experiment with different ways of introducing yourself and your confidence will naturally build. Treat it like a rejection-free social playground and have fun with it. So, we've managed to say hello. But now how do we make this conversation meaningful and memorable? Now, I've got various tips for this, but ultimately what it boils down to is curiosity and actually giving a shit. So when I'm networking, I play a game. How fast can I find something about this person that I find genuinely fascinating? Usually this will be whatever they're most passionate about, which might not be their job, it's often not. If I fail to find it, it's because I didn't ask good enough questions. We've all experienced it. You know, when you ask that question and it lights a spark in the eyes of the other person and the conversation comes alive. It is your job in any networking interaction to light that fire in the other person. And to do that, you're gonna have to do more than just asking what their job title is. You know, why do they enjoy their job? What drove them to start that business? These motivation-based questions will get you past social niceties, show a genuine curiosity, and people will always love that you asked and cared about, you've got to care about the answer. Don't just be waiting for your turn to speak. Now, another part of networking that particularly students find challenging is finding yourself in a conversation with someone who is your professional superior. And I struggled myself with this constantly as a student member of the IOD. Uh, you know, what value could I, a mere student, possibly bring to the CEOs of companies, right? And for starters, there's loads of value you can bring. Just look up reverse mentoring. But the trick here really is to steer yourself onto familiar ground. So, for example, picture the scene. I'm at a networking event. And I'm a student, so I'm making the most of the free wine and nibbles, obviously. And I finally get the courage to approach a guy who quickly reveals that he is a managing director of Mercedes-Benz UK. And you know that moment where you already felt like you were massively out of your depth merely by being in a room? And then you find yourself go from here to here. Yeah, that was me in that moment. What could I possibly say to be interesting to this guy? Don't suppose there's any jobs going? Internships? No? Fortunately, I didn't embarrass myself by begging for a job. Instead, my mind flicked immediately back to a marketing lecture I'd been in the day before, and I simply said, this is gonna sound a bit random, but I'm kind of curious to know how Mercedes approach customer segmentation. Now, the beauty of a question like that, beyond just being quite an interesting question, is that one of two things will happen. Either you're about to learn something because they're going to school you in a practical application of something that you've just learned in theory, or, as happened to me, you're going to have found your way to add meaningful input. When he responds, you know, it's funny you mention that because we're actually working on a brand new strategy right now to try and figure out how to reposition ourselves with millennials. Bingo. And so unfolds a stimulating discussion in which I can add meaningful input simply because I read a textbook on it the day before. And he hadn't, meaning I might even have been more of an expert than him in the topic at that time. So steer yourself onto familiar ground. Maybe even prime yourself with some topics before entering the room. So the next part of networking is what most people uh, who experience networking regularly will agree is the hardest part. Closing conversations. <sighs> Awkward. First things first, a question for you. Let's say you're at a house party, you're on a night out, and someone starts talking to you who, let's just say, not your type. What do you say to get out of that conversation? Thought about it? Let me guess. I just need to get another drink whilst you've got a full cocktail in hand. Or is it, I need to go to the toilet again? <laughs> first things first, please do not lie your way out of a conversation during a networking event. People can tell, and it will probably backfire on you, because if you say you're going for a drink, they'll probably come with you. And if you say you're gonna to go to the toilet, there's only so many times you can do that before they will see you walk across the room and start a conversation with someone else. 
Or if you really commit and go to the toilet each time, they may come away thinking you've got a bladder problem or worse, a drinking problem. But here's where the context of networking can step in to save us once again. This other person literally came to this place to meet multiple new people, same as you. So just be honest about it. But for what it's worth, here are a few tips of things that you can do that add value and close the conversation down. Step number one, make an introduction, especially if there's an area of mutual interest. This is one of the easiest ways of adding, adding value that requires no expertise whatsoever. They will always thank you for doing it, and you can move on because they're about to go through exactly the same you know, introductory conversations that you've already heard. But let's say you don't have anyone to introduce them to yet. What do you do then? Well, ask them, what person, business, or industry are they interested in connecting with tonight? And when they respond something like tech startups, you say, brilliant, well, if I meet any other tech startups here this evening, I'll bring them over and introduce you. You're gonna get a genuine thank you straight away, despite the fact that you've done bugger all to help them yet. And you can immediately follow and say, well, great, I'll let you keep circling to meet new people. And in the meantime, I'll keep an eye out for tech startups for you. At which point they're gonna be delighted for you to go and start new conversations because you're helping them by being on the lookout. It's almost like you've done them a favor by ending the conversation. Magic. So that's the hardest part out of the way, but arguably not the most important. Hopefully at this point you've built some rapport, but it can all be for virtually nothing if you fail to follow up. Most often I start following up by reaching out with a personalized connection request on LinkedIn afterwards. After, afterwards. Why personalized? I mean, we just met that night. They know it's me. They're going to accept. Why bother personalizing? And there are two good reasons to always, always do this. Number one, you can continue building the relationship by remarking back on something that struck you from your conversation. Like, I don't know, I really enjoyed discussing how we might reposition Mercedes with millennials, for example. They're probably gonna reply to a message like that and the conversation will continue. But the second and perhaps even more important reason is that this now acts as a permanent reminder for both you and them of who you are, how you met, and some key things from your conversation. This future context setter is gold dust if you end up wanting to follow up with them in a year or two's time with an ask or just to arrange a call. They're gonna remember who you are and they're gonna be much more likely to give you the time of day as a result. Plus, if you see them at another networking event and you can't remember the detail, whip out your LinkedIn app, look them up, and hey presto, you've jogged your memory. I have used this trick to save my skin countless times, and I am painfully aware that I'm giving away one of my best tricks here. So I, let me just apologize in advance if you catch me doing this on you at a, at a networking event, and even more if I forget your name because I'm rubbish with them. So apologies. I am trying, I promise. Well, right back at the start, I promised you that I would tell you the story of how I got a job uh, when I was on a first date in an Indian restaurant. And um, I'll stay true to my word because as weird opportunities go, I'm gonna to struggle to beat it in just sheer surrealness. <laughs> so I'm on the date and uh, it's three days before the EU referendum, which is an important piece of context because inevitably we started talking about it and me being the constant theorist and enthusiast, I was setting out what I thought was gonna happen and why. I was wholeheartedly wrong, by the way, but fortunately that doesn't matter for the story because the next thing we know we suddenly hear, Excuse me, but I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. And as I look up and see a white, middle-aged, balding man, my stomach drops. Because straight away I'm thinking, oh God, I'm on a first date and I'm about to get into a heated debate with a complete stranger about Brexit. This is going to make for a fantastic first impression. But fortunately, that's not what he said. Instead, he simply said, I have no idea what you do but I like the way you're putting your thoughts together. I own a business near here, and if you're ever on the lookout for work, give me a call. And with that, he gives me his business card. He walks straight out the restaurant, leaving us stunned until eventually my date broke the silence by saying, did you set that up to be impressive? Or do you always get offered jobs when you go out to dinner? Now, weird as it is to say, these kinds of surreal, lucky, serendipitous opportunities will come your way more and more if you get consistent 
with building meaningful networks and relationships over a long period of time. I myself, it's how I come to stand here today as a 28 year old who is director of digital and community for the Planet Mark, who consistently collaborates on a weekly basis with the Disney's form of head of innovation and creativity. And now I'm doing a bloody TEDx talk. Yes, I continue to pinch myself. How is this possible? Think about it. Compound interest. When we first start work, we are told to invest in our pensions as early as possible. It's drilled into us. Invest in your pensions because the earlier and the more consistently you invest, the more valuable it will become, thanks to the miracle of compound interest. I would like to suggest to you that the same is true of relationships and networks. The earlier you start investing and the more consistently you invest in them, the more valuable they will become for you. And not just in a crude financial sense, but in terms of the friendships, the emotional support, and the wider opportunities that people that you meet will bring to you. And this is why I believe that meaningful networking is the most important skill that we can teach to people, particularly young people, because it gives them the opportunity to create lasting relationships with people who will remember who they are, what they're good at, and the fact that they took the time to be curious about things beyond their job title. So get out there. Head out to a networking event near you, online or offline. It's COVID season after all. Put these skills into practice and then follow up with me with a personalized message on LinkedIn to let me know how you got on. Thank you.